And welcome people to the shit show where me and my guest generic gamer talks about you and your team that are shite. Uh, welcome, generic gamer. Yes, that person is me. How how are you doing? I'm very stressed. Um as I just came home from work and like I'm meant to do this and wasn't prepared at all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I blame time zones on that yeah, one. Yeah, I, I should also blame time zones as that. Um, you know, game is from the US, right? Yes, uh, yeah. Florida specifically. Yeah, also it's... known as Disneyland. Exactly, exactly. It's it's gonna be a struggle for us on that point, uh, but I think we will manage. I think we will manage. Um, but anyhow. We are starting off looking at uh, Division 5C, um, specifically uh, the schedule, and to see who won and lost this week. Uh, I'm mainly going to go on team names, as I haven't learned who played what team yet. <laughs> um, but we will figure it out as we go. Probably or be all right. I'm just gonna check, double check here as my title might be changed, right? It's no, nope, it hasn't changed. How great! Oh, it's gonna be all wrong for me everywhere. There you go, that changed. So, uh, looking at our dog Friday versus Sugug Wild Balls first. A 1-1 one, one seems... Oh no! I see something terrible! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Jakes! Um, the poor Black Orc. <laughs> yeah, poor MVP Black Orc. Oh, that sucks. I mean, zombie MVP isn't the greatest either, but I would rather take a zombie MVP over a dead Black Orc. <laughs> <laughs> A, a dead black orc that got the MVP too, yeah. and was about to level. That just exactly. that just makes it worse. Yeah, that that is shite. Um, so looking over, it seems like a one-one. Um, one touch for each team. One death. Twelve armor break versus nine armor breaks. One uh, explosions. So it seems like they have played kind of bash heavy, doesn't it? Yeah, it definitely, at least as far as the Necro are concerned, they definitely went in with their fists swinging, because I'm not seeing any kind of casualties coming yeah. from the orcs. Yeah, because it's 50 si 56 blocks versus 51 blocks succeeded. So I guess the claw definitely helped them in that regard. It might have, yeah. Um, we see four KOs on the dogs, which is, I'm guessing, the Necros, right? Uh, one casualty sustained. Uh, one KO and four casualties, one, and one death for the Orcs. I'm guessing that's the difference there. Being pure damage. They at least got two serfs out of it, so hopefully that even the numbers slightly whenever those took place. Yeah. It might have. It might have. And the expulsion on the Necro end kind of suggests that one of the zombies really wanted to jump on someone. It might be in one of those cases, yeah. Either how, a 1-1 one -one result is a good result. It's not a loss in any places. And just one death. I hope it wasn't any crippling damage towards the orc team for the four casualties. I can't really tell uh, from here, but we will look into that when we are looking closer at the teams, I'm guessing. Only a bunch of badly hurts and the one death. Ah, that's why I have a co caster with me, because he can shit that stuff in the background. And the only thing that the Necro got was an armor busted zombie, who um. I checked and was ditched immediately after. Ah, I see, I see, I see. So, walking over to... Traumatized... Is it traumatized? Spe spelled weirdly, or am I... Tra 
Trauma Ma Maestrid? Trauma Maestrid, okay, yeah. My dyslexia is going to get the better of me here. FYI. Versus Xerxia? Uh, Xerxia? Sounds Spanish. For some reason. Um, and they went a 2-0 two, two towards the Dark Elves. Um, which I'm not too... Um, surprised over? Is the right word there, maybe? Yeah. Um... Oh, it's not Spanish? Okay. It sounds Spanish. Satusia. Or Mexican. Isn't that Spanish? I, anyway. I definitely found myself in my role match that if Dark Elves are on, like... Even when they're filled to the brim with loners, they're nothing to take lightly. <laughs> yeah, and, like, Dark Elves in early stages as well... Um are very much so better than a just a full chaos team even though if the chaos team has a few block um because blodge is so strong as we see a blodge getting the mvp and a beastman getting an mvp and it seems like the elves took some took one death um took some armor breaks but but actually dealt some armament breaks as well, so it might have been an even fight on that front. The only death the Dark Elves took was on a single loner. Oh, yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't matter in the whole world at all. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, three KOs, meh. Three KOs, meh. One injury, that might be in the big part as well. And th I mean, I'm not saying meh to KOs as they are like just KOs, but they can definitely turn the tides if you get the right targets out, but it's still KOs. Early chaos at that, like, y you don't expect them to get a lot of casualties before the clogs come out. No, and exactly, and you need, if you're playing them as a kill team, you kind of... You kind of can't in the beginning. You need to play them more controlly, and then they develop into a kill team, more or less. Um, but it seems like the Dark Elves definitely had the ball control here when viewing the statistics. Um, as the possession of the ball happened quite early, 18% um, of the occupation on the opponent on... Oh, well, 25% on the occupation of the opponent's half, which is a huge deal. I might have to equate that to the Blodge guy, since yeah. no tackle, and he was probably the most slippery player on the Dark Elf team. Yeah, it seems like they were playing with a fireball as well. So, did the Chaos go in... If it's the Chaos that have this Fireball stats, it means that the Elves had the Fireball, right? Uh. <laughs> Asking the important questions here. Yeah, I believe it's the Chaos who have to roll to resist the Fireball. Yeah. Because I know exactly. the Dark Elves have to roll the 4+, plus just to get it off in the first place. Yeah, exactly. So... But it doesn't say... Yeah, exactly. The fireball, it shows on the one who suffered it. Exactly. Thank you, Muppetillo. Thank you. Um, yeah, and that was the, the chaos. So the chaos actually gave away in this, enough inducement for the elves to get a fireball or wizard, which might have resulted in the 2-0. And why we are seeing so much ball occupation on the Dark Elf side of things. Alright. Yeah, well. Uh, moving on to Los Pados de la Tele. That sounded Spanish. You can't take that one I from me. Uh, bloody Dark Spiky Mamers. Okay. Oh, it was Kislev. 
versus another dark elf <laughs> team. Um, O3, what do you think of this? Uh, you know, I'm just happy that the Kislev didn't get beaten Murdered. to hell and back, you know? Yeah. I mean, elves are do just doing elf things, it seems, at this point. Um, and it... Huh? Yeah, continue. And it seems that the block Agi guy leveled up for the Dark Elf team, so that's good. Oh, that's good. That's good for him. Uh, Eldrats, Mopotilio. Eldrats. Uh, play the Kessler team. Yeah, but like, as, as well, we would um, expect Dark Elves to do well early as well. They have, they're on elf team. They're gonna elf. Um, it seems like most of the leaps as well. And this is way too many leaps, I would say. How many leaps did he take? Because I'm looking at the uh, .NET page. Okay, so he took 9 uh, plus 4, so 13 leaps. That's, a, that's almost one leap per turn. That's a bit too many in my mind, especially with early Kislev. I guess he was just getting either getting based up too much or really wanted to go for those dives. Yeah. I'm also seeing that uh, the bear on the Kislev end got injured too. Just a badly hurt, no, no big deal about that. But that probably helps since instead of all yeah. the two pluses the Dark Elf, or three pluses they would have made on the bear, they made yeah. the normal two pluses as soon as it. Exactly. Yeah, that might have been a big, big factor to it. But the bone, it seems like the bear was kind of good at six rounds at least, since it has six succeeded boneheads. So, did something good. It either stayed for a full six turns, or it probably only got used in six turns, because I wouldn't be surprised if he, like, didn't activate it at some times, since it was yeah. already in good... Yeah. So let's say it got used for half a half a drive, or for a full drive, and then it got knocked out early, maybe on LOS line. Because that's the only hit I would see that you might would want to take for Sister Bear. Also seeing that the Kislev got an expulsion, but since the Dark Elves didn't take any damage, you gotta wonder who it was on. Or... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. What it got sent off for. Yeah, exactly. But anyhow, 3-0. Very well played for all the Dark Elves. I would say. Uh... Rebel Vapor Wolves and Grail Knights Cavalry. I'm guessing <laughs> Pro Elves and Bretonians. Yep. <laughs> Bretonians, I could have guessed. This is one that I definitely caught, and I can safely say that the Pro Elves put up a very good fight, but the armor breaks just came in for them. It, it kind of had to whittle them down at some point. Ah, I see, I see. Okay, yeah. Proves kind of suffer with the armor value a lot, and you have to be super efficient uh, when you... When you're giving an opportunity to take the ball, you need to take it, basically. With, with pro elves. And you should always be in scoring range-ish. Take that for one from from players as playing Kale Pros. It, they are weird to play. They're a weird bunch. Yeah, and by the end of turn five in this match, they were already down five players, from what I remember. Yeah, then it becomes because like so for me in my matchup versus in elf in elves, elves are better when it's a thirteen versus for this matchup, for example, when it's a thirteen versus thirteen, the elves are ahead because they can outrun the, the other coach. 
Uh, but when they are, the elves are 10 versus 13, it's starting to add up into even ground. Because the elves can still do elf bullshit. At 10 versus 13. But it would start, when it starts to come down to like 7 or 8, that's when you're starting to see where elves are really suffering from losing so many players that they're really getting out bashed and out based. And often because of that, out maneuvered, man maneuvered as well. I definitely remember the Mighty Blow guy helping a lot in this match because as <laughs> soon as the pro elves tried to yeah. get away from everybody, he was right back on them. Yeah. I, I think he was the player uh, Arcane always blitzed with, if not almost always. Yeah, so Mighty Blow is like claw for dwarf teams for pro elves. <laughs> it's it's one of those that you go, oh, they have Mighty Blow. We are gonna play with three players today. How fun! <laughs> uh, not much you can do about it. It's just gonna happen. One thing I will hold against the Bretts though is mm -hmm. that I remember at least during the first half, both of their rerolls were burned right away. Oh, that might be hurtful. Definitely something you gotta work on in that regard, but other than that, f fair play to both of them. They did what they were supposed to. Well, elves trying to do elf things and Brett's punching people. Oh, there you go. It's what it's supposed to do then. Um, Moving on. Into Mosh Mob Munchen versus Die Wildy 13. And it's dwarfs versus rats. Um, 2 1. Yeah. The armor breaks. Wow, the armor breaks. Jesus. 22 armor breaks. <laughs> And like y you expect dwarves to beat up Punchy? rats, right? yeah, but like that's insane. <laughs> and the weird thing is, like on the .NET page, it was only three badly hurts. Jesus! And how many was it? Five oh. KOs. How? So whatever the dwarves were doing, they were only pumping out stuns. I guess it was. Yeah. Jesus. I'm yeah, in, in, as Papatilla is saying as well, 54 blocks succeeded versus dwarves is way too many to give up, I would say. Um, yeah. For the rat team. The rat team must have based like crazy. The, the key to going up against dwarves is essentially stay away from them, and if you get the ball off of them, punt it to make them exercise some more as a desperation play. Yeah, exactly. If you need Exactly. I mean, On... he, he won because of the basing, I'm guessing, but I just wonder how badly his team is shaped after, <laughs> after it. The dwarves surprisingly took something permanent in the form of an MNG, but... Hmm. Well, there you go. I feel like they had the better match since they came off with three levels. <laughs> yeah. One on a run or two. Yeah, and being, what, down four SPP? No, three SPP f t towards rats, which is counting as an agility team in, in some franchises. Most most franchises. Um, I think that the Dwarven team came out on top of this one if you're looking for the SPP to to total or to the the winning race over there um, yeah but yeah it, it definitely would have been an interesting match to see what the rat player were doing here I, I feel like their speed ultimately won that one yeah it must have been speed speed over brawn Um, and then we have North North Sika FC versus Face Planters. Face Planters are wood elves? No, high elves. Okay. Oh, this is the Norse. The one lineman on the Norse team that you don't want an MVP on. 
He he fired him too. Oh, he did. Yeah. Oh, that must be. I I yeah. I don't blame him because the skill you take is either dirty player or fen, but you don't want dirty player on a block piece, I guess. And fen you, just kind of want... seems. So for Norse, uh, and so I've been playing Norse in college, um, and played them the most. Dirty player on a block player, everyone is a block player in your team. Um, so you want dirty player, you want many dirty player. You, your lineman is 50k. Uh, I will put DP on it every day and kept it around because kick DP is so good. And then just build a bench and be happy with it. Um, but it's, it's, it takes a certain playstyle to pick up dirty player and be like, this is super good. I don't entirely hate the decision either because he's already got a potential new kick piece on the way since there's two guys sitting at, on five out of six right now. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, or you can drop the DP and take tackle. Yeah, exactly. And then you can fire him on the next level. Exactly, yeah. So you just to have more tackle. Or, or Fend. Fend is really good as well. As, I personally uh, went with the. Uh, oh, sorry. As you were saying. I personally went with a Fen kick Lino <laughs> yeah. in Lineman League North. Yeah. Since, since I already had a dirty player doing yeah. all the work and a surprisingly effective one at that. <laughs> yeah, and also surprisingly effective on breaking armors in that way. But seeing 15 armor breaks versus 9, 3 deaths on. The high elf side of things, is that meaning that they inflicted? No, they got three deaths. deaths. That's going to be hurtful for the high Thing elf is, team. though, two of them were loners, but the okay. only one that actually matters is that he doesn't have the wrestle guy anymore. Ooh, that's kind of... So it was two loners and a wrestle guy. Right. Oh, yeah. So the lo it's good that it was the loners, but still three deaths. That was, getting um, yeah. Yeah, having your wrestle guy be gone, so to speak. Yeah, that's, that's gonna hurt. I feel. yeah, it's hurting more than you would think. Especially because everybody is filled with block, from what I saw. So yeah, exactly. Um, so we can't look into the next, the next, this last match. It's probably scheduled within uh, the next few, the next day, uh, as the rollover is very, very soon. Um, but I'm hoping that they get the game played so we can look it out or check it out uh, next week. Uh, shall we take a quick look over the teams? Sure thing. Uh, so we should begin with uh, the Orc team from someone that I can't pronounce. Yeah, you can try to pronounce that name, that username if you would like, coach name if you would like, but I'm not gonna even try. Um, is the jump up new? The jump up is new. Yeah. I thought as much. Nothing else is new, correct? Nothing else. <laughs> yeah, see, I gotta have a good memory. Uh, but he lost a black oak, which sucks. As he's already replaced one. <laughs> um, yeah, but other than that, I mean, jump up. I don't hate it, because if I remember correctly, jump up relies on an agility roll. But... Couldn't he just pick the dodge to dodge out on a 2 plus? I mean... <laughs> I guess what he's going for is like more of a... Palm guy who gets into the action faster. You know? Yeah. Instead of a palm guy, move three spaces, wait for the next turn. Okay. 
So, and also we're getting here from Shad from Opetillo. The Agi roll was a 2 plus already with Agi 3. With Jump Up. Oh, really? Yeah. Because the, the text on Jump Up saying something along the line with uh, declares a block action while prone, which requires an agility roll with a 2 plus modifier if he can complete the action. Hmm. Blodge here is would have been so much better in my mind. Imagining having a mobile mighty blow that you can just dodge out on a two plus, cut a corner or two, and kill somebody. It would have been that would have been a better choice in my mind. Yeah, when you put it like that, uh, <laughs> I, I can't really argue with that. Yeah, you can't really I argue that, right? I, I even have a blodge agi for white, so... Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, this good this man is super good in defense. Um, instead. Which I might... While he want to jump up. By having, having him on the back line. Even though if he's down, he can just sprint the full six movement. And to murder somebody. Um... But yeah, Jumper is a is an interesting choice, to say the least. Moving on to Kuvata, the Skaven team. Uh, that suffered 55 blocks or whatever it was, right? Yep. <laughs> and they're surprisingly fine. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, man, only badly hurts. I thought the whole team was going to be, like, red. Just red everywhere. Um, oh. But, yeah, this team is looking good. It's uh, looking like a Skaven team. Dirt Captain with Hail Mary Pass, and I only know that it's Hail Mary Pass because I clicked on it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's an interesting choice. Um... I personally would have gone with either, uh, what, safe throw? Yeah. If you throw with him a lot, which I guess the accurate would kind of suggest that, or dump off if you carry with him a whole lot. Yeah. So I'm guessing his plan is to be do the Norse theme, so to say, what the, what Sinai decided that Norse is going to do. Which is actually a Hail Mary passing all the time. But we with the runners. And then he's going to use his gutter runners to re retrieve it the next turn. Problem with that plan is that often more than not, people are having backers. Um, or safeties. Uh, <laughs> that are going to stand around and just be annoying. Yeah, punting is very limited because you have to do it on the slow guys. Yeah, exactly. And Mo he's already. Oh, sorry. Yeah, continue, please. I, I was just gonna say he's already done with the slowest team on the list. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean the gutters are looking really, really good with the strip ball wrestle, the block one, the two heads one. He just basically just needs a movement up one. Um, but yeah, Hail Mary Pass is a bit up there, I would say. I don't know what I would have given it um, instead. Maybe Lida is one of the thoughts that I'm sending out uh, to get that cheap extra team reroll to go up to four rerolls for some greed. Um, you could have picked Block. Made him basically more secure. Same with... Does they get dodge? On a normal? Uh, no, they do not. I, yeah, I was about they to don't, say. They don't. Um, but yeah. And he should focus on... Um, Leveling up the Storm Vermin. More often. They're not. Just not making them... Because they're AJ3, you can easily hand over to them if you're uh, placing them in a scoring position. Um, then leveling them up to get them Mighty Blow. Or my, one Mighty Blow and one Tackle. Um, and then from there, leveling them up would be quite a punch fest, really. 
after that. Um, also, I think I forgot to look at the orc team. Yeah, the orc team, the orc guy, the guy that I can't pronounce. Don't forget to buy your apothecary. We need to actually check that out. Um, so everybody would get their apothecary as soon as possible. Let me Did you have anything more to say about the Skaven team? No. Okay. I, I'm i in full agreement. Yeah. Level up the Blitzers with touchdowns and yeah. you'll be good. Yeah. Then moving on to Anarchai uh, with, her, with his Bretonian. Or her Bretonians. Um, and now we have three Dodge Blitzers. We just had two. I don't like it. I uh, yeah, I don't like it. I would the last one would should have been a leader for me. <laughs> I I cannot understand that he's taking blodge on all of them to be safe, but a third reroll feels a lot more important. A third reroll would help this team so much. <laughs> Especially if it is like you said, where he basically just spent its first two rerolls immediately. Um, right. But yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he's saving for the reroll, but that's 140. And yeah. if one of these blitzers die, that's going to be a majority of the money already gone. Yeah. And I actually think that you want to replace this uh, peasant as well. And, and also buy a secondary peasant. Um... Just so you can have a bench of peasants. And when you can have a peasant instead of a blitzer when you one of your blotches fail you. But also he's good for LOS duty, as Chet provides here. But yeah, he's good for LOS. Nothing really much to say about the team other than that. What would you give um King Charlton? Their blodge blitzer. That is 11 out of 16. Sure hands. Sure hands. Yeah. Sure That's hands. absolutely necessary on Agi 3 team. Yeah. Sure hands. Okay. Leader. And after sure chat, chat screams leader. <laughs> okay. Also leader. But I, I, I'm going sure. against what I'm saying. Sure hands there. and leader. <laughs> Okay, sure hands and leader, no. It, it, it's gonna be one or the other, and I yeah. hope it's leader. Yeah, okay, yeah. We're seeing, we're screaming leader, we hearing us out. Um, moving on. Uh, so, sorry if my voice got loud. <laughs> no, it's alright, it's alright. I think I have you in a pretty decent volume. Oh so. no, I'm only saying that because I rewatched the last broadcast and my mic was loud. Yeah, I've turned you down since then. Thank, thank you ahead of time. I'm, I'm, I'm not giving anyone bleeding ears. Yeah, someone's saying a leap, skip leap. Um, uh, I'm not entirely against leap, but I, I hope he'd take it after an agi up. Yeah, same. You, you don't want to be making four plus leaps all the time. No, he was don't. He definitely don't. Looking at the next team, the dark elves. Tap Comet uh, with the blobby, Bloody Shark Spiky Mamis. He has already two Agi 5 Blitzes. Oh, I didn't even see the second guy. One with already with Dodge. How fun! Uh, yeah, that's a target. He's the guy who won 3 0. Um. So this team is officially marked as disgusting uh, already. All he needs to do is add an extra team reroll, which he has like 10k left, which is a guarantee to get for next game. Buy the third reroll, and this team is off to the moon. I, I hate seeing two AG5 pieces. This is just, this is just <laughs> gross. Four, four games in, two AG4 pieces, or five pieces. Yeah. Good luck stopping this team. 
He can pass across the field already. <laughs> it's a 2 plus 2 plus for like a long bomb. Almost. <laughs> I I really hope the dwarves punch them when it comes to that time. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna it's gonna this team is gonna is definitely being one of the teams to look out for. It, it's definitely a good team, but Yeah. I'm a bit jealous, I would say that. I'm a bit jealous. And I'm having a strength for Ajo Five Elf. So um, looking at Red Devils 18, Chaos Team. Um, yeah. This was something that I was expecting by now. So, some of the Chaos Warriors have gotten some levels, and some of the Beastmen have gotten block. And one has been hurt. Seems fairly accurate towards what a... Uh, Chess team at this TV would be. Only thing I really got to point out is the kick beastman. You, yeah. you don't really see him. Yeah. That is a. Not, I wouldn't say all the ones out, but it's definitely out there. It's not the worst choice. Yeah, it's not the worst choice. And. I I don't know how I feel about the Maya tool. Um, I personally like to play with a Maya tool because I think it adds a bully piece to the field, but because it has like just AV8, it's kind of sackable if you just have a mighty blow dude. Uh, strength five isn't the highest. Two, three strength threes can make it a one die. If you have a strength four guy, you can make it a two die fairly easily. Um, eh. Looking at the stats for the Mano, he only took five blocks uh, the entire game against the Dark Elves, but none of them resulted in armor break or a KO or anything of yeah. importance. I say give him another good few games, yeah. and if he doesn't get anything out of them, that's when you kick him. Yeah, exactly. If he doesn't get an MVP in the part in the few, um, let's say three games, then you're starting to think about. Then you should start up to think about sacking the Mino, maybe. Uh, the miner has been playing one game though, so the Mino is brand new. He bought apothecary. Um, from from the Greenhorn games, it seems. But the Miner is definitely going to slow up the development of the rest of the team. Yeah, you'd rather want to get those warriors eating on some MVPs. Yeah, you want them and you want Beastmen. Because you want Beastmen to get their first level as well. That's kind of deter because that's what determines when Beastman steps up in becoming a positional instead of just a like LOS fodder. Uh, right. Like a 5 SPP Beastman doesn't mean crap until he has that first mighty blow, that first stat up. Uh, and somewhat. Speaking of, I would definitely try and level up the. Block Beastman with 12 out of 16. Just to get an early Mighty Blow or something out of him. Yeah. Or if you want a dedicated ball carrier, maybe extra arm, sure hands, one of those. Yeah, yeah definitely. And also, don't forget to hand off to your Case Warriors. Your Case Warriors are slow. They're just movement 5, but they're still Agile 3, which is why they're so great, because you can force feed them SPP through uh, touchdowns. It's just a 3 plus handover. If it's safe, do it. And he has... Oh, let's look at this. Hmm? Three guys very close to leveling. The 4 yeah. out of 6, 5 out of 6, and 12 out of 6. Yeah. But definitely focus on those three guys in particular, if not the Beastmen, in the next couple of games. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. 
exactly Mipatilla. I think I think that's what correctly. Mipatilla said Mine is a good early on phase, but when you get a killer and some levels, it's just the worst beastman. Yeah, I would say so. Um but it's also at the latest it's a really late TV, it's a bully. It can become a bully. But that's just later. Sorry for that. Burp. Uh, going on to the Necro team, our dog Friday from Big Floor Pie. Um, they they didn't see any levels, definitely a lot of development going Yeah, which is good. Development is good. And since you they already, are necromantic, they don't need an apple. You already got two wolves waiting for 16 and 6, respectively. That's, That's good. Frenzy would uh, give them that last one. Maybe focus a touchdown on the Growler. Um, yeah. So you would get him block or his first level up. Um, and then focus on an SPP on a vanity pass, maybe, from the beast, if possible. Um, also, fo trying to focus on Oswald is not too bad an idea as well, to get that sec the second tackle. She has some uh, tackle. Which Oswald? Because there's two of them. <laughs> uh, is there two Oswald? Really? Yeah, the unrivaled and the angry. Oh, okay, yeah, the 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 one that haven't gotten any SPP yet. The non mighty blow one, the unrivaled one. I personally would give him guard as soon as he levels, cause oh, you right, only have right. the the four pieces, unlike an undead team. Okay, yeah. Your 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 you haven't played Necro, right? I don't play Necro. I just know that the werewolves. Don't get agility, which messes me up, or they don't get strength, which yeah. messes me up. Yeah, they get agility instead. Oh, this whole time, I thought their agility was on the doubles. No, <laughs> it's the strength up that's the doubles. It's rubble that fools you. Everybody's just running around with strength four, mighty blow werewolves. <laughs> yeah, it messes me up, man. <laughs> yeah, but other than that, the team is looking good. And then we see the the uh, black orc that have now got a haircut, a bit of a slimmer body, with now white skin instead of green. On five out of six SPP apparently. <laughs> yeah. And um, we see uh, the next dark elf team, which is looking a bit poorer than the last one. Still in good shape. But a bit poorer. Uh, we don't see any big anjo up, but we do see a tackle blodge piece. This was the team that won with two nil. Yep, over the chaos. Yep. I don't really hate the tackle, since yeah. every, there's a lot of teams running around with blodge right now. Yeah, I don't have hate the tackle either. I don't. Uh, hate the wrestle lineman either. Um, oh, he's had the wrestle lineman. Yeah. Uh, force feeding some some goals into the other blitzes and the witch is your next goal, I would say, within the matches, next couple of matches. Um, Definitely. Getting force fed and vanity pass on this one, next game, the first thing you do out of the get-go, if you get the ball uh, on the back, far back field is something that I would recommend as an elf coach uh, myself. <clears throat> Same with giving the other ones that are zero SPP. This is a good tip for any elf coach out there. When you have an elf on zero SPP... Oh, thank you for the raid. Um, when you have an elf uh, coach on or elf player on zero SP, it's a bad stat to have because you want that MVP to land on them and then be able to just grab the level immediately because the vanity pass is that easy. 
Um, but yeah. What I would recommend in that case is Vanity Pass with a 5 out of 6 guy. Yep. Preferably to the Witch. Yep. And then pass with her the following turn. Because yeah. she's definitely one of the biggest MVP targets you have going right now. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's a great stat to you, or great thing to do so. Uh, also, for those that uh, came in through the raid, we are doing a recap over Division 5C at the moment. Looking over all the teams. But yeah, other than that, a pretty standard Dark Elf team. Now, look at, at looking at the Kislev team. Yeah. Oh, they got a move up. That's good. And the bear is still here, playing along. Um, but yeah, so the, all those 13 leaps, none of them vo were either... Uh, this is uh, this is the shit show, Jeff, because we are talking shit about players, shit teams. <laughs> hashtag, In this case, they're not shit, they're new. Yeah, hashtag yoke. Don't get sad. <laughs> um, anyhow. Uh, yeah, so all those 13 leaps that he made was with Agile 3 and not with Agile 4 because he doesn't have any catches yet. Um, that being said, because you don't have any catchers, take the movement up guy and start turning him into a ball carrier. Yeah, definitely. Give him the the sure hands. Give him stuff to um, actually like do some good for your team. And rebuy. I think did he has he rebought any linemen since last time? Uh, let me ch check how many he had uh, in the previous. Yeah, because. I think it's money value dropped, or did he buy just buy an apothecary? Because I know that you had a lost a, a hard season so far, both in Greenhorn and um, in the regular season. I don't think he ditched a guy. Is the thing? Oh, okay. Because I'm counting eight on both ends. Hmm. Okay. Well, might he just been buying the apothecary then? Because of the low, I mean, I meant because of the low gold value. He has on twenty k. So, anyhow, it's a it's a struggling Kislev team in my mind. I'm hoping that is what we're gonna do together. What I'd recommend immediately. Yeah. For his next match, at least. Yep. Ditch the cheerleader, ditch the assistant, and ditch the Agi 2 Blitzer. Now, now, I know Blitzers tend to be very useful for Kislev's teams, because mm -hmm. they make 3-plus dodges, 5-pluses, and 2-plus dodges, 4-pluses. Yeah. V very useful with diving tackle. Yep. But at this point, I feel like you should be playing the inducement game, since you're already so low and beat up. Yeah, I can feel you from that standpoint. You can you could play the inducement game, but I also feel like if he keep kept the blitzer, uh, kept the fan factor, kept the shield leader, I'm I'm one of those weird coaches that think that 30k here over at this end towards the this coast assistant and shield leader, uh, would actually give you one percent more towards your favor whenever it's a kickoff event, um, but that's just me. Um, but I think this team has struggled from the get-go. I think he lost a lot of t people um, um, during Greenhorn. That's why. Uh, moving on to the Pro Elf from Fiat Luxia. Imagine that I'm going to ramble on about a bit this, about this team. So... Looking from last time, the accurate is new, I'm guessing. Uh, let me check. Yep. N no, the accurate was there before. Okay. The what? only new level is tackle on the blodge blitz. Okay. So that's good. 
it's super good. Bludge Tackle is such a good piece to make my Dancing Around the Roses tactic that I've explained in videos before on my last match as well. And sidestep, you, you can't forget about that. Yeah. It's Bludge Sidestep Tackle, so good. Uh... Focus to level. Fo keep focus. I think f focusing on leveling up blitzes can be done for now. You only need uh, Bludge on the secondary blitzer. Then he's done. Then you can start to focus on leveling up your catches, uh, making some passes to them, scoring with them. Um, but other than that, it's a good-looking team. It's a pro team. You don't expect to have eleven players ever. <laughs> Because it will only happen in your dream. And blow out some cash, hey mate. You can buy... You, I would suggest buying a third catcher here. With that cash. Since you already got an apothecary and three rerolls. Um, but other than that, good looking team. Good looking team. Yeah. Unless... Unless, this is a really greedy choice. Okay, I need to go back to this. He could save up for 200k, buy a stadium upgrade, buy the enhancement, and just go for Wizard Stadium. Yeah, there you go. Coming in, saving my ass. Uh, Fierce looks here in chat. I'm saving up for Wizard Stadium, hep. <laughs> you madman. <laughs> madman think alike. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, no. I, I'm just gonna focus on that uh, 1230 TV right there. Yep. <laughs> oh well, his nat next match it won't matter anyways. So. Yeah. Okay. We'll get to that. Yeah. We will get to that. Uh, looking into the Dwarven team from Shibapapakapakala. Yep, that's how you pronounce it from here. Probably Spanish. I don't know. Um, Mighty Blow Troll Slayer. Mighty Blow Troll Slayer. Really good Troll Slayer. Block Runner. And... Guard Lineman. Yeah. It's it's good. It's a, it's a super good... Uh, Dwarven team. I can't say much more than that. They're slow. They're fat. They can take punches, apparently. As this, we only see a Amanjeed. Now, there is a problem that I'm seeing. Okay. What? Much like the Bretonian team, they only have two rerolls right now. Eee. Yeah. So, he's either saving for a reroll, or you gotta hurry up and level up the runner again to give him leader, because two rerolls on a dwarf team... So, so while they do get a lot of one dice opportunities, you you tend to spend those rerolls on those one dice. Yeah, and with Dauntless running around, especially against all all these other teams, yeah, or at least one other team where you're out strength, then yeah. No, I fully get you on that point. So sorry for that, Yawn. Um, looking over the Norse team. I'm going to speed ahead here a bit because we're a bit behind timer. Um, oh, Jesus. How fun. <laughs> so strength five, Ulfen Werner. Huh? Oh yeah, he he posted that all over the Discord. <laughs> I remember that guy. Fun. <laughs> so this piece isn't going to be to be annoying at all. Uh, yeah, well done. You got yourself a murder target. <laughs> uh, so a answer me this, because I completely yeah. forgot. Yeah. Old Sked strength, right? Yes, they do. They do. They get they get strength in general. And oh, the, fir dear God. The, the first skill you want is block. Unless you get a strength up. <laughs> Which you got. But I'm just saying a strength five might blow guy. This 
Yeah. It's gonna get crazy. <laughs> yeah, so so the build path for other runners aren't really the same as um, any other string type. These are more your flesh golems, so to say, of the Norse team. We more often than not are seeing block guard, uh, maybe stand, stand firm, juggernaut, out, um, stuff like that. And then you're giving them mighty blow. You might be giving them mighty blow, but you're not giving them piling on because they are literally your pillars of your team. Um. I unfortunately have to be right back very quickly. I don't mean to hold you up. No, it's all right. It's all right. I'm just going to move on to Hobbs MG that I haven't played yet, unfortunately, just to look over his team. And it's looking the same. Okay. Moving on to Rooney. Uh, which is also, which team, is also looking the same. Uh, these guys haven't played yet, so that's why I'm not going over their teams. Uh, sorry, not sorry, not getting your played games in before the recap. Um, we'll do that to you. I will go over them next week, though. Then we have Unfortunate Spoon 777 that suffered three deaths. Where two of them were on loners, uh, happily for him. The team is looking fairly good though. Um, so some dodge on the lineman and a blodge tackle on the blitzer. An agi up on one of the blitzers. Super good. Can't really get better than that. Scoring with the thrower, I think, is your next objective. Scoring with that and your Agile Fire Blitzer to get dodge on him, to get blodge. Um, then he can take himself anywhere. It would be an immense threat to everybody. If you can if you can score three times, score an alignment last. Um, but from seeing the last game of yours where you have a bit of trouble, um, might be possible. But yeah, definitely score on the thrower and on the Blitzer if possible. And then you should should be solid. Should you really get be solid? Yeah, there you go. Three vanity passes and an agile and a score on the agile up. Yeah, that that's the way to go. Yeah, definitely. And then you score the second time on the lineman, right? Cause we're greedy over here. And that was everybody's team. Hooray! We actually made it kind of within the time frame. That's amazing. Uh, leadboard doesn't look too... Uh, we're not really talking about this. I'm just going to show it for those who cares. Um, but it's looking like this. Still a way to go. 13, 12 more weeks. I think. And that was 5C for you guys. Uh, we're not... As I said before, we are not doing uh, pulls on who will win versus who, as I suck at that and literally can't decide because it's still a dice game, everything can happen, literally you can score with a piece of Nurgle if you roll enough 6 pluses, trust me. And what unfortunate timing, I just came back. Yeah, so unfortunate. Um, so I'm going to hop over to 4B now. As it is their turn to get recapped. Dave time! Yeah, exactly. So 4B had to wait today because uh, of the last game here. It's still being played as we speak. Um, so we are going to wait with that and see if we can get a response from one of them when they are done. Um, but I hope uh, it will be done by the time we are done with the recap. If not, they have to wait, uh, wait next time, next week. Oh, they are on turn 13. Okay, good. Then it will be done. Nice. Oh. It's good. So, uh, looking towards lurking with Lani and the Kain Toads for the first game, it is the Goblins, seems, versus no, the No, 
these are... Are they what is it? Underworld? Skaven. Oh, are they Skaven? Okay, never mind me. Yeah, because while Fezglitch is a ball and chain guy, I think he's supposed to be a rat. Uh, yeah, right, 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 right. right. It's that weird thing oh, where Cyanide oh. forgot to make his model. Right. Yeah, I was like, she's goblins, yellow. Yeah, they're probably goblins. Uh, yeah, so uh, rats versus dark elves. Uh. Two one. Yeah. Uh, eight armor brinks. This is nine. Already seeing a major problem here. Okay, what's the major problem? Two major problems actually. Movement up with shelf. Got movement busted. Ooh, that hurts. That's a shite. Let me check something real quick on top of that. And he ha hasn't gotten rid of her yet. Ooh, that's... Yeah, that's uh, that's a lot of TV standing by to get. Yeah. Uh, Second problem. Sucks. Yeah. The blodge tackle sidestep guy got agility busted. Ooh, yeah, okay. Wow. Um, looking a bit into the game, it seems like both of them took the opportunity to punch on each other and both make a scoring race as well, it seems almost. Uh, yes, with the 2-1 scoring, uh, but still. Because of the f 35 blocks of both, uh, well, 35 and 31, the 6 chaos, the 2 chaos, the 2 injuries, and the 2 inflicted injuries as well. It seems like they have been blocking back and forth with each other, where the rats kind of won. The yeah, it's kind of that situation with the dwarf and Skaven matchup from 5B. Yeah. Or 5C. Or 5C, I should say. Yeah, exactly. Um, where they they traded hits, but the winner with their more man won. The the winner came off with more damage, essentially. Yeah, that's... exactly, exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. At, at that point, you gotta wonder: Was it? Did worth you it? really win? Yeah, was it worth it? Uh, but anyhow, well played, the Cain Toads. So, moving on to the duelists versus the horror horror all stars, um, and we see an Amazon team with an MVP on a Blitzer with God, nice, nice, and an MVP on a strength up flesh golem, and everybody oh, says no. yay. <laughs> oh oh no, he's just a better mummy right now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> With 31 out of 31 SPP as well, so he's leveling up from that MVP. 8 armor breaks versus 16 armor breaks. Seems fair enough. 2 touchdowns versus 1 touchdowns. And we are watching a 43 versus 45 blocks. Uh, 7 KOs inflicted versus 1 in KO inflicted. So it seems like those mummies have been punching. Yeah. Uh, stab was one particular star player induced or from the duelist. What I can remember from the duelist wasn't they pretty damaged, so they might have induced Sarah. They did indeed get her. Yes. My statistics analysis were what, correct. What I'm wondering though, yes. did they get a wizard? Um, I can look into that. No. Oh, no. They did not because I don't see any real wizard rolls here. So then Zara's probably a lot more expensive than I remembered. <laughs> yeah. And but, yeah. But def. Hmm? Yeah, continue. Oh. Continue. D Definitely a good choice because she's got that uh, added armor to stabbing necro guys. Yeah, and stab is usually good versus bigger dudes like flesh colors with uh, strength 5. Uh, 
I'm, I'm trying not to think of that guy. <laughs> the mo mo nightmares from. Oh my god. And yeah, definitely 33% dodge success race is very rough for Sons. Oh god, imagine that thing trying to cage dive, dear <laughs> god. <laughs> <laughs> coming I you. would hate it. Yep. Uh, moving away from the nightmare and the horrors of all stars, uh, Ocradius versus Sandy Pants. An orc team versus Kimri. Seemed the orc have taken a 2 0. Uh, an MVP on the thrower seemed well worth if he's carrying the ball into this touchdown zone for two, two times. And an MVP for a really leveled up thrower. Uh, only 6 SPP from the Camry, but they're an Agi 2 team going up against Armor 9. You don't really expect a lot of breaks or yeah. touchdowns from them. Yeah, you don't. Thrower was leveling up anyway, what a waste of MVP. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just you wait until we look at the actual teams. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is there something else going on behind the background there? Oh yeah, I, I don't want to spoil the surprise. Okay, we, we are we are in for a surprise. You know, game it promises to remember that, boys. In for a remember, surprise. not all surprises. <laughs> <laughs> um. So what? We are looking at 33 blocks versus 38, so not much of a punch fist. Uh, 4Ks versus 2. Uh, t 1 inflicted. Eh, seems average. I think the surprising part is that the Camry came off with more blocks as, a force, as opposed to the Orcs. Even if it yeah. was by 5. Yeah. It's still pretty surprising to me. Yeah, but these are blocks that succeeded. Um... As well, so. Oh, and they don't show the failed ones, right? I don't think so, right? I don't know. I don't know how cyanide statistics works like that, but I think it doesn't show the 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 ones that didn't make out, make it. Out. I don't know how cyanide works at all, so we're all good in that department. Yeah, well, then we're all in f the same e playing field. Um. But yeah, it seems like it was a fairly, I would say, fairly fought fight between them. Uh, it just seems like the orcs came out on top with the armor breaks. I, I give mad respect for Jacob Jeppe for playing Camry, mm -hmm. but... They definitely have uphill battles to go through. Yeah, they they have. Especially when they're facing other control teams. And agile teams. And kill teams. <laughs> Is there a good matchup for Kemri? Kemri. <laughs> dwarves. Y y no, no. Dwarves would actually be pretty bad because of all the mighty blows. Oh, really? Okay. Humans. Yeah, because... <laughs> humans. <laughs> okay, humans. <laughs> humans, Nulls, uh, Kislev, Amazons. I'm guessing it's fairly okay for Camry to feed his face. Yeah, actually, when you put it like that, Kislev would be good. Yeah. Moving on from that match. The typical Spanish. Here we got a Spanish one versus the Soul guys. Okay. Dark Elf team versus a Wood Elf team. This must have been a race score raising. We see an MVP for a Blitzer. That's good. We like those. And an MVP for a Catcher. That have movement 9. We don't like those. And he levels. That is even worse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, two touchdowns, two passes, 10 armor, armor breaks. One touchdown, two passes, 8 armor breaks. Um, seems like a standard elf mirror mirror game. Um, only thing I that I find of note is that the wood elves get 
got more levels out of this entire thing. Yeah. But, again, saving that for the part where we actually dissect who got... Yeah. Uh, Shupni, Shupni is actually saying in chat, Fun fact about this game, it can't shit. KO'd itself on the GFI, it danced it, KO'd itself on a leap, and the other almost died on a leap. <laughs> Seems like an average elf game to me. <laughs> I'm I'm just surprised the tree man didn't get pun punch himself in the face with a skull. Yeah. At that point. Yeah, it seems like one of those matches, doesn't it? Where stuff just goes horrendous. But but fair play to him, he came off with a lot of SPP. Good God. Yeah. And we have a fireball as well. A oh, four out, zero out of four. Yeah, so guys, this is why we are not using fireballs and we are using lightning bolts instead. Uh, five, five, three, I know trees look like they are three, but they are magical. They don't catch on fire. I'm sorry, does it work that way? I but as far it. as it goes with them being the lightning rods, yeah, they wink, wink. Yeah, they 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 fall like timber. Uh, it's a funny joke, though. Um, anyway. I know it's a joke, but I think timber is actually a new skill for them <laughs> in the new rule set. Oh, really? I don't remember what it does. I just remember seeing it on the halfling team. I so hope that it is something to do with them falling down and damaging the surrounding something. Yeah. That would be so much f f sense and so funny. Oh, it's a plus one to get up for each agent halfling. Wow, that's super funny. So it's essentially like them helping him back up yep. with their short stubby yep. little arms so what i'm seeing imagine halflings standing at the top trying to push him up and then they walk up on top of each other's shoulders like a ladder oh, <laughs> to push it up <laughs> <laughs> do you have like a stack of like five halflings pushing it three up <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I I just checked, uh, and what else sadly do not get that on theirs. So you, okay. you don't got the war dancers doing their special tree get back up dance. Okay, so both yeah. okay. we are brushing that laugh off. That was a good one. Whew. On to <sighs> Waleed's warriors versus blood horse. Yeah, thank you for that segue. <laughs> I needed that. Uh, Skaven, uh, Underworld team versus, uh, Shorfs? Shorfs. Shorfs. Oh, so you can see the, the nice face of a hobgoblin. I want the team out full of hobgoblins. I'm thinking I actually may, might try my kiss level and just build a hobgoblin team. Anyhow. Um, so we have our uh, one touchdown versus one touchdown, nine number breaks versus 29 number breaks, one explosion. Um, seems like the, the shows for fouling a lot. Maybe. Yeah. As they got four, four, 11 KOs inflicted and four KOs. Injuries inflicted. <laughs> That's a lot. They were all on the goblins, uh, as far as the injuries are concerned, so... Yeah, and the chaos, but still, it's a lot. He, he the world's warriors must have had, like, zero gobos go left at the end of turn 16. Uh, hey, at least he gets to save... Animosity rolls. True. It's easy to dodge that one when you don't have any goblins left. <laughs> I guess. Uh, 
Does the success on Always Hungry mean that he ate the goblin? Success on Always Hungry is, I think, when he doesn't eat them. Aww. Damn it. What happens <laughs> is that when they fail Always Hungry, then they get an extra re an extra roll to see if they do eat the goblin. Ah, uh, okay. It's a very strange thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, it seems like it's uh, one of those games that they... Oh, it actually landed? Oh, right, because it is an inaccurate pass, isn't it? Yeah. Or landing. Here you go. You got thrown twice. What the hell? Okay, he's throwing gobbles left and right then. What I'm thinking happened is that... Oh, it's the re-roll. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, makes sense. Thank you from Abdillo for actually assisting us on this. It's if almost I... like I'm a bad Blood Bowl coach who doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, same. Uh, but... <coughs> Shit show. <coughs> Shit show. <coughs> <laughs> Just had a tea. I lost like nine games last season. Don't yeah. tell anybody. Don't talk about it. <clears throat> we are good coaches. Um, but yeah, what I think was happening is that he was going to go for a second touchdown, but as yeah. trolls and gobbos tend to do, either the one turn fail on the big guy's end or the little guy doesn't know how gravity works actually i think since he actually stuck the landing i think that's where the one one came from um, ah. and that's why they went because of the w w big armor explosion that was 21 of them um on the old of gobos it would have seen looked like a zero one for the shelves where the shelves just stomped gobos left and right and then the this underworld came in with a throwing for a one turn finishing the game for a one one i mean fair play <laughs> both coaches did what they do best chorps punching things and mm -hmm. underworld trying not to get punched yeah exactly hide behind the goblin meat shields yeah exactly uh moving on to the next game uh ruth valley pitman versus dr fleusman uh it's a human team versus nurgle two nil for the nurgle wonder what happened there I'm upset because, uh, at least what I saw on the Rebel page, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the ogre got badly hurt. Oh no. Poor ogre. <laughs> the vanity pass tree. No, no, no. Did it, did it actually vanity pass? No, no, no. I'm saying the vanity pass tree got ruined. Aww. Aww. I wanted to see vanity passing, guys. Damn it. We are good coaches. We demand vanity passing ogres. Okay, so um, looking at the blocks, it's a 32 block succeeds versus a 44 block succeed. Two KOs, uh, two injuries versus one KO and one injury. Um, it's it's a it's a match for for the Nurgle. The thing about the two injuries, though. Is that it's counting both of the Rodgers decay stuff. Uh, okay. So, and even then, the only Rodder that got hurt mm -hmm. was a badly hurt. Okay. Both roles. So, so according to Shat, the Ogre was stupid enough to block the Beast and then got a both down and then he injured himself. He did a dum-dum. You tried, buddy. You tried. You'll, you'll get him next time. <laughs> you will get. You will get the beast next time, hero. You just it, get a it, level fifteen levels in D and D, then you can kill the dragon. It, I'm just gonna find it funny that if his first level is a double and he gets blocked after the fact. 
You dumb, I'm dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Muppet Taylor came in with the best one. You dumb. I'm dumb. Uh, yeah. No, it's it's looking like this game where where Nurgle punch heavy. So to say. And Blodge guy over here got a level, so you Ooh, know yeah. Nurgle came out okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna just back out and then try to get back in. The game should be finished by now. Now, right? Let me refresh. It's not. Nothing. Mupatilla, weren't you looking at the game uh, live? How is it going? Is it turn 16? Have they stalled out on four minutes turn? Turns. And not confirm the match. JJ finished the game. Okay, yeah. So we should see the game here. <laughs> it was the skill of the Nurgle coach that did it. Well played, Sparky. Oh right, I'm I'm looking at the wrong. Shut up! This is the shit show. We're good at blood bowl and recapping. Shush. Shush. Okay, yeah, so Toro Loco versus Phoenix has and Nails. Uh, shut up, chat. <laughs> uh, we see a leveled uh, uh, MVP uh, Beastman and an MVP Blitzer. The Blitzer is Nuggled? No, it's M no, it's just an MNG. Okay. 10 Elmer Breaks versus 11. At two nil for J A Cash, because he's playing nice. the Beastman, right? Yes, he he is the yeah. Chaos Coach. Yeah, well done, J J Cash. Um, three passes. Wow, that's a lot for Beastman. I'm guessing we're gonna see more than them off those, right? I don't normally associate Chaos with pat passing at all. <laughs> no, but this is JJ Cash, and he's playing a different kind of blood bowl with his uh, Chaos team. <laughs> it's the type of blood bowl that I would call fun. I'm not gonna get used to this anytime soon. <laughs> no, welcome to G-Man, where everything is strange and weird. So, we have 48 blocks versus 35. Uh, six KO inflicted, uh, one injury inflicted, two chaos inflicted, and two injuries inflicted. It seems like the the hits from the chaos were harder than the hits from the orcs. If that makes sense. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, good, good, good. And then some passing on top of that from the chaos team. Um, would make it sense that they won this match as well. How many of the KO KOs on the orcs woke up though? Uh, half. Five, so... out of five. five out of ten. Oh. And That's... apparently, uh, they got fireballed. Uh, as well. Where was it a good fireball? Three out of five. Succeeded. Uh, so two uh, fell down, I'm guessing. Right? Because that's how stats work. If you fail it, you roll under four. Chat, confirm me here. I, I barely use fireballs, so... Yeah, I think it's that's how it works. Uh, yeah, it looks like JJ Cash won the in the ball in the favor from both armor breaks and passes. According wait, wait, to wait, the, wait. how did the Orcs team pass five times? Carefully. Wait, 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 wait. We need to go now and immediately look at these teams. <laughs> I'm, I'm leeching off the Discord report right now. <laughs> please don't. Yeah, please, oh, please do. I meant... I, I want to see what the crap happened. <laughs> so, what we got here... 
Mighty Blow Guy leveled. Okay. Uh, for, for the Beastman. Yeah. Uh, just a regular Block Guy leveled, and then Blodge Mighty Blow Blitzer on the Orcs. That's a that's a good one to get. Okay. And yeah. unfortunately, a Strength Bust for um, the random Orc lineman who is unfortunate enough. Ah, I see. I see. Uh, shall we go into looking at the teams? Uh, now we have two more teams in this one to look over, so we're going to have to be a bit more speedy than we was last time. We actually made it in time last time, but we it's just because we didn't look at two teams while you were gone. That's, that's basically what happened while you were gone, FYI. Right. Uh, so, looking at Rift Cannon's Shorf team... With the amazing bull centers and the strength four blocker. This is still in very ugly shelf team in my mind. Correct? Yeah. Is, is uh, anything new? Uh let me check. Because this is your job. Here. I think. To check. I'm burned, uh, Okay. Received grab. Okay, so firm. that's new. Okay. And the old man got yeah. dirty player. Okay, so a new dirty player in grab. Both are great skills. I do not know at all how to build shelves. All I know is that we need to kill this bull, the goat. He's not a goat. He's a bull. He's a very fast bull. And a very strong bull as well. With strength 5 and movement 7. And blocks. Can get the bounty back? <laughs> like, like the mass bounty? I mean, but the bounty board is still up and running. <laughs> no, no, but I mean the mass chorf bounty because I Oh, yeah, I was yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I, okay, yeah. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. I didn't mind it too much, but I'm not a chorf player, so it didn't bother me. Okay, moving on to the Wood Elves, Shoppy, whose team was the worst team on the pitch, apparently, with a catch, a KO on the G5, a dancer KO on the G5, on a leap, and another dancer almost died as well. Um, so looking at the team, is anything new? Artorius the second getting pro, okay, which I don't hate. Yeah, which I don't hate, it's a good skill, fantastic skill. Especially because he's going to be leaping all the time, taking a whole bunch of blocks, that kind of stuff. Yeah, leap. A pro is the, like, the automatic reroll for leap. Um, since there isn't any skills to make that happen. Um, it's the next best thing you can get. Dark Sun Gwendolyn, the movement up guy that we hate dearly. Ooh, got to tackle. Yeah. Why tackle? I wonder. Why tackle? Why not sure feet? Or s yeah, why not sure feet? He has wrestle, so what I'm thinking is the case here. And I'm not sure if he's still in chat or not, but what I'm thinking is that he's kind of a longer range ball sacker in case the war dancer can't get over there. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm reading this in context which shift press down here because i can't stream because it is one o'clock a.m for me no balls shall be saved from my team he says <laughs> so you're correct he's making a bull sack get out of it <laughs> fair play to him yeah fair play to him and let's see here if i can find him manis of the abyss getting sure hands okay so the sure hands is new as well Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Manage of the Abyss. He's getting sure hands. I had a sure feet plus movement catching my other life. My elves hate. Oh, okay. <laughs> know the feeling of that one, Shibney. I know the feeling of that one. It's a great looking team, though, I would say. Uh, the tree is amazing. Uh, the pearls are really good. Uh, same with the catches and the thrower. The thrower needs some level, but now with sure hands, you can do some weird shit with him. Uh, and J5, Blodge, 
you got everything you need in a Woodall team. It's surprising that this team have hold up so good for you, I would say. Uh, but very well team. Very good team. Do you have a Wish Stadium? No, but you have a level 2. Okay. I'm yinxing the crap out of you. This is the shit show. We talk shit about our shitty players, but you're not shit. You deserve it. <laughs> get it, get it. Uh, moving on to the Camry. Uh, from Sandy Pants, Jacob uh, Jebet. Was this the surprise? No. Uh, no. No. That, that, that was for those. the Orc team. And the uh, JJ yeah, yeah, Cash team. Okay. So the Tomb Guardians now got Mighty Mighty Blow Guard, which is standard for them. I think they had that last time we checked them out as well. They didn't receive any levels. No, they are just still the same. Still funny though, how a armor up on a skeleton is still like screwing with my head. Gotta love them. I sincerely hope it wasn't a five five. Um, just me. Other than that, camera team. Now we're going into the surprise from Shatness uh, Bassoon. Was this the surprise? Uh, who? The Orc team. Shatness Bassoon from Felix Hassanus. No, 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 no. Muppetillo's team. Muppetillo's. Okay, from Muppetillo's team. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Surprise there. What have you done, Muppetillo? Okay. Uh, is anything new here? Uh, unfortunately, I cannot see on .NET, so let me pull up the Discord report. Okay. Grim, Grimath, the Blodge Mighty Blow guy. Grimath, and this is how I'm reading, guys, so... Green math. There you go. Yep. Got God. Okay. Solid one. Try to level up Grandma. Grammar. As I would need to still to work on mine. Grammar. Uh, kit this Blitzer, please. Buy a new one, maybe. Still, why do you need five team rerolls? Have we still answered that question? Or the fact that he passed five times last match? Uh, very welcome, JJ Cash. Why did he pass five times last match? Yes, BR Insider. <laughs> Uh, four cheer leaders and four fan factor and four coaching. Yeah, so I'm I'm a f bigger fan of one of them because it gives you a bit higher percentage for winning. But four is a bit too much. Okay, so he was getting a bit wild while trying to move the ball around. He had some hot dice there. Yeah, he must have been because this is not the optimal thrower. This is a carrier build. This is not a throw build. You don't really have any retrievers either. He must have been passing between between blitzes and like linemen. Hot dice. Okay. Yeah. Hot dice. Anyhow, good orc team. Did he have any more level ups? Uh, no. Okay. Mm oh, wait. Here it is. Uh, the Discord report also reveals the short and skinny of it. The thrower did four passes while... Oh, wait, no, it only shows the four-pass thrower as an impact player. Okay. Okay. Well, something. We are looking now at Demigurg's necro team, Horror of All Stars, where the horror, horror Frank the Further from Generic Gamers Nightmares comes up. Oh, dear God. Frank and Furder getting guard. Yeah. I could not see a more perfect skill on him than that. Mm. Just. Yeah. I don't like him, but 
Because I don't like him so much, I will put my rage towards the rest of this division. Yep. Give him Break Tackle as his next skill. Make him as scary as humanly possible. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for the follow, Big Easy TP. And JJ Cash as well. Uh, Another one. Pinhead getting sure hands. Pinhead getting sure hands. Yeah. So, I'm a firm believer of the fact that you shouldn't be using wolves as carriers. Uh, it's one of my philosophies. Uh, I want them to be punching things. Um, or carrying, or like carrying the ball in a hot seat, seat so to say. Um, and I would like that sure hands to be on a goal, ghoul runner, but I'm not a good necro coach. No, because this guy doesn't have any ghouls. Yeah, having a sure hands on a wolf is an absolute requirement because you're not going to put it on one of the whites. Those guys are going to be based up nine times out of ten. Makes sense. Makes sense. What I don't understand is why you gave sure hands to the tackle guy instead of something like sidestep. Yeah. Um, or oh, dodge. Make it blodge. That too. Just make it blodge tackle. Place it on stuff. It was so the survivability is like ninety nine percent more, or better. Not re any elf coach in here would tell you the difference. Uh, in difference with that, but hey. Um, well, that's the Demenberg's team. I mean, there's not really much to talk about. It's a necro team. So, uh, Big Easy TP, we're looking out out for your dark elf team now. Uh, yeah. This is a damaged team now. Um, this is a funny one. So when when is the when is the ceremony for melting this town into glue? <laughs> Sorry for being so harsh with my words there, but when is this dying? <laughs> Is our you, question. You definitely wanna. Yeah. Uh, for those that um, are just uh, w w looking in. Uh, so it's a movement up which, but why you don't see any of the movement when he take a movement bust. Or oh, she did. MD blodge tackle sidestep guy getting an agility bust. But you don't want to yeah. see on elves at all. Yeah. So this piece all of a sudden turned into not an elf. He's yeah. He's he's turning into. I put dead into movement bust. Jesus, are you kidding with me? Really? I would have killed her on the pitch. Yeah, I would have <laughs> taken the dead honestly. Yeah, same. Saves you the time with some extra clicks. Yep. <laughs> No, but this one can the Andre three elf can still definitely do some work. Um, he can still work out. Uh, Andre three blitzes aren't that bad. It's just that you can't use him to dodge around with, and you got to keep that in mind when positioning. That you can't like cut corners with him and stuff. I'd say work on building up your next witch, and yeah. then that's when you start considering. Okay, when do I replace this? Yeah, exactly. It's it's working up your next witch, working up your next blitzer. Um, so. So it sounds like a good. Uh, so he's thinking about replacing the blitzer first, then living with the witch until he has the money. I mean, it's a fair point. It's still a Vrassel, uh Rackle witch. No, it's just yeah, it's Rackle. Uh, no, it's just Raj. Raj, I mean meant Raj. Damn it. Uh, shit, shit show. Uh, welcome to the shit show. Uh, I'm gonna keep doing that whenever I'm making a mistake. Just to be perform well. 
Um, anyhow, it's yeah, it's a good looking team. This is still Frog of War is still a very scary blitzer. It's very good, very very good. Same with Polywhoop. Uh, FYI, Blitz, Big Easy TP, are you going Bollywhoop whenever she's punching something? Because that would be very funny. Looking into JJ Cash's uh, Chaos team now. All Beastmen and a Minotaur. We have some Ajay up. Movement up beastman. We have a double agile up beastman. We have a might or oh, strength up minor tool. All right, so I finally got the uh, <laughs> the website to work with me on this match. Okay. Uh, so what's his face? Iron Dog Master Borks getting claw. That's surprising. Okay. Yep. No, that's that's a good pickup. And Caloric the Kid, if I can find him, getting guard. Okay, yeah. That one I don't hate, because this team is lacking guard. This team is very much lacking guard, but I know for a fact that JJ Cash is one of those weird folks that started a trend with the new youth, um, that we should play with no warriors and just play just only beastmen. And he's doing fairly well doing so. Um, I'm because more often than not, your guard is often coming from them, the warriors, Danis. Um, so I can see why he's lacking some of that uh, guard. Oh right, you're following Hood's footsteps. Yeah, exactly. Hood's is the the main guy when it comes to just beastmen. How are you li liking just Beastman though? I might ask. Uh. And this is both for you and J. A. Cash. J. A. Cash says he's loving it. Okay, well. It, it definitely seems like a fun build. I I can't hate it. Yeah, it it I could see a world where it gives you a lot more movability, like, like. F freeze up a lot of space because you're basically getting four more beastmen that you can do turn into whatever you want. Um, so you're getting a lot of more like free space, but you're losing some of that strength. But some of that strength you can gain back in that guilty, it seems. Exactly, yeah. What I recommend is definitely try to get all the guard as soon as possible, because since yeah. everybody's strength three, you, you kind of want that kind of advantage. Yeah, but as he's saying, I mean, we can't forget this, uh, everything still blitzes at strength four because it, everything got horned. That's true, but so like... It's a, like a semi-guard. It's true, but you only get one blitz per turn, and... A yep. lot of guard is kind of invaluable, in my opinion. Yeah, so, and also, you don't need to blitz with the damn Mino. He's strength six. He's punching literally everything. <laughs> yeah, if he's close to something, uh. You can even punch freaking Tomb Goddess with this piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh... If, yeah, if it's, it's going to uh, be between him and the Strength 5 Flesh Golem one of these days... Yeah, I'd rather uh, take the Fresh Golem, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was bullying a troll last game. Yeah, I can see this. <laughs> now this team is looking fine. Don't forget to spend your money, though. Unless you're looking into... I mean, you already got a security gate. So, yeah, don't forget to spend your waste some of your cash in the inducement phase. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Since you don't really want to be over 150. Hey, now I can actually she on for hey buy, buy a coach assistant and cheerleader gives you like one percent better chance of getting it in your favor. There you go. Uh, looking into the goblin team that was 
disguised as rats. Uh, half the race beans uh, scaven team is the ones that I'm talking about. Uh, Alright, I thought you were talking about the Underworld team for a second. No, I was talking about the Skaven team. Oh, yeah, because it's our player. Yeah, because I'm my shit, shit co-host. Oh, co the, the only level up they got in that match was Fez Glitch, but he's a star player, and he doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. No, unfortunately, he doesn't. Though, it's still a very nice team with the two gutter runners with Anya 5. I'm just saying still, level that one up. He has three SPP left. Shouldn't be that hard in my book. Uh, I, I will give him credit, though. He vanity passed twice with that guy, so oh, he, he did. at least knows that he's he needs something for okay. the yeah. regular uh, dodge Agi 5. Okay. Not two heads of McGee over here. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um... Yeah, this team is looking like a normal Skaven team in my world. There's nothing too surprising about him. Um, moving on into Kirtan. With his poor, poorly, poorly beaten up Amazons. Who actually got a level up on one of the Blitzers. And that Blitzer, Lauren Hart, got... Nothing. We don't know yet. We don't know yet. So let's um let's talk a bit about that then. So if it was a a double, she would get what? On doubles she would get passing and a guilty. Is this something that you would want out of those two? On a guilty I could see jump up, but at the same time dirty uh, diving tackle. Yeah, I could see di diving tackle. Diving Tackle will definitely be good, because then you can put that with Stand Firm. Yeah. Yeah, so Diving Tackle, Stand Firm. It's a way to go. If it was a Agile up, I would take it. If it was a Strength up, I would take up, take it. If it was a Movement up, I don't know. If it was an Armor up, please no, don't. Please don't. Uh... Cause sidestep having sure feet, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely seeing what you're saying, Potato. So he's saying DT curse uh, side sidestep having SF. Yeah, stand firm. Yeah, sure feet. No, shit, stand firm. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Welcome to the shit show, everybody. Where the coaches are shit and the, the teams that are really are even more shite. Not towards aim towards you, creating. Just saying. Um, still like this team. Still, it's still good enough to be able to come back. Um, just on the fact, the bank alone that uh, line woman cost fifty k each, and you can buy a couple each after each game if you roll uh, above forty uh, in generic stance. Um, but yeah. Thank. Thankfully, he got rid of the. Strength 2 catcher, so step in the right direction already. Yeah, there you go. And he can play the indecent game for a, a while. So. Yeah, he's getting star players in Matt every game. Either Wizards or Sarah and stuff like that can actually help you out mm, bigger than you think. Roxana plus Mage, yeah. Ugh. That's a big And if one. I remember... Even though there's, like, another Camry team where Stakes, Fonzera could be effective, she's also strength, so that just puts her at a big advantage right away. Yeah. So, are we be ready for the surprise that Mupotillo have sent us from the gods? Alright. Okay, now, let's see. The only level on this team was the thrower. But instead of getting a quick boot to the unemployment line, he mm -hmm. got block. Well, there you go. This means that he is more than likely going to be a, a pretty permanent fixture on the team yep. for some time. Yep. Yep. And, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's a... Uh... 
He's staying. He's definitely staying. I, I don't like that he's staying, but if he's working for you... Great. No, but in all honesty, um, I like the way that Mapatillo is thinking. Um, he's thinking that the weakest point should be within the cage and the strongest point should be outside of the cage. Um, one of the strongest point is being his strength or oh, agile for Blitzer. Um, and his down Black Oak with Block Guard. Um, and we're not going to talk about. But yeah, I definitely like this team. This team is turning out very good for Mopatillo. Um, Vanity Pass. Lineman Vanity Pass. Is that a thing for Orcs? Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't hate to see it. I have a dirty player lying around. Yeah. He's got the bench for it. Yeah. I mean, you have done seven successful catches so far. So... But hey, I, I just hope I'm wrong with this thrower. Yeah. Here's to hoping he gets something good and spits in my face. Yeah. Oh, you wanted to score on the, the strength four, but you couldn't because you bolted him into KO. Aww. So there you go, folks. Bolt uh, the strength four pieces. They go into the KO box immediately. You have he heard it here first. Shit show. This is where I need, like, uh, the shit show logo just floating in and out. Just have it as an on command button file followed by, like, a toilet flushing noise. Yeah. Wait, wait. wait. I can solve this. I can solve this. Look oh. at this. There you go. <laughs> this is for all the folks at home. <laughs> there you go. Um, so... Yeah, it's a good-looking team. Uh, looking at the next team, Mammoth, the t typical Spanish. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they all play their game, so I don't need to worry here. Unfortunately, no levels on this one, okay. but we got a 15 out of 16 Witch. Okay, so Vanity Pass, please. Uh, though the, that which doesn't have upper rights might mean that he doesn't even want to vanity pass. Yeah, no, that... I completely forgot this was the armor buster one. Yeah. Uh, I totally agree with you there, Mopadillo, that he doesn't have upper ring. Uh, I'm putting it right. Uh, but yeah, um... Passing with this witch might not be worth it because she's busted uh, to down to armor 6. At the same time, eh, do as you want. It's a witch. She's yeah. Angie 4. It's a 2+. plus. I would do it, most likely. What you need to hope for at this point is the 11 out of 16 guy getting his MVP and Tortilla de Patata, who I point out because that was a very fun name to say, Mm -hmm. Uh, getting a few duck touchdowns. Yeah. I think he only needs two. two. Yeah, two. Or an MVP. Yeah. Or an MVP. So, one of those scenarios. Um, I mean, it's a good looking Dark Elf team. It's a standard one, I would say. With a lot of blobs. And sidestep and take a tackle. Some god. Uh, moving on. Since we're running about a bit over, maybe. Uh, from two Wolstead's Underworlds team. Uh, let's see what they got. Dirty Harry. Dirty Harry. We so, do not know. No, we do not know. Uh, think about that one. Would you take it if it is a strength up? Yes. Uh, Agile up? No. Because with the Agile up, you'd probably have to depend on a double for Dodd. 
Oh, it, I'm not gonna go through with movement and uh, and and armor. Maybe movement. Movement. Maybe. Okay. Uh, Depends on if you want to give him frenzy, I guess. Yeah. Is there something good in the agility and passing tree that you want? The agility key three, I see, definitely see jump up. On the menu. Dodge. Maybe dodge. Yeah, maybe in blodge. Um, so, from my point of view, uh, you you want your underworld team to be a glass cannon. You want to hurt the other opponent as much as possible in the shortest amount of time before your team implodes. Um, so, jump up for me would be very beneficial. If it is a double. If it is just a standard roll, tackle, dauntless, pro... Frenzy, there's a lot of skills to take. Horns. I would. My top three are tackle, horns, pylon. Pylon, yeah. There's a there's a lot of skills there that you can get that would help you out. Um, I could see a piling on argument being very strong, but I could also see a tackle argument being very strong, depending on who you're facing next. Uh, as he has the second Skaven Blitzer as well, fairly close by, on the level up. Uh, you, you bring that up, but the next team he's going up against are the Amazons, so Tackle would definitely be useful. Yeah. Um, as they said on the podcast, Tackle is the way to win before uh, doing damage, because damage is unreliable, while Tackle isn't, unfortunately. Um, is there, are there any other skill ups on this team? Not really. No. No. Uh, okay. Let's move on then to Andorson's Throth Valley Pitmen, the human team. Did we do the Nurgle? The Nurgle? The Nurgle is lost. What? Oh, okay. Well, I, I was just wondering because I thought we were doing one side first and then the other. No. no. Okay. Uh, SPP, Ogre, Vanity Pass. Come on. You can do it. I believe in you. Uh, did uh, any other human get a level up? I don't think so, right? There were no levels on this team. Just the... One or the two SPP from Kaz, rather, and the five from the MVP. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I hope that the MVP landed on someone good for you. The dirty Pro player. The dirty player. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. He doesn't need more skills. Uh, but yeah, all that's there to say is vanity pass. With the thrower to the catcher, run the catcher to the end, score yeah. a touchdown on him, and get something on the air. Yeah, I think we went over what you needed to do in our pre-cap. And it still sticks the same. Vanity pass, vanity pass, score, score a shit ton more. It's, it's fairly straightforward. And then we have Sparky 73's Dr. Flugman. We got ourselves a Blodge Nurgle Warrior. Woohoo! Uh, that is gonna be one slow ass leveling piece. But now it's because he got block, um, all of a sudden he is leveling a lot faster. Blodge Disturbing Presence, or you... Blodge Foul Appearance, I mean. Yeah. That's going to be a bit tough to deal <laughs> with. Yeah, have fun punching him around the pitch, and the same with the Beast of Nurgle. That is Tackle. Oh, God. Um, yeah, this, te this Nurgle team is really turning out good. Is it a second season team? Yeah. It seems like so. 
What I would recommend with this Blodge Warrior, and he's not going to get levels anytime soon, it's definitely a slow burn kind of player. Mm -hmm. But what I would do with him, get Stand Firm, get Tentacles. He's all set. He's going to be hard to take down now. Yeah, definitely so. Definitely so. Um, tentacles, God, Stand Firm. He, he's one of those wool pillars in your team that you will circle or have as a pitting point. And the same with your Beast and Mergul. So you're going to have two pivoting points, which is Nurgle's favorite toys. As top of that, a lot of kill, which you seem to have plenty of. Um, and then you have a um, Sure Hands Goat that is just one pass away. So Vanity Pass. Break cage I get, diver. Yeah. Would you say extra arms or block on the sure hands first? I'm more towards a. What did you say? Extra arms or extra arms or block or block block? I would say. Uh, mainly because block gives him more uh, utility uh, than extra arms. Because you don't, you wanna, so, Pestigors are kind of like beastmen in the sense that you want them, you want, you, you don't want core skills on them until they level like a Ajay up or movement up, until they're showing what they're becoming. Alright. Which is kind of sad to do that way, but it's the way that you will get a optimized team. Um, and the Spark is saying that he's gonna maybe create a break tackle cage diver from that uh, Nurgle warrior that had blocked. I mean, do it. It sounds fun. Break tackle cage diver. Yeah, do it. it sounds fun. Um, and then. Someone else is saying, uh, two blo block, then two hands on the goat. Yeah, best of all, yeah. Yeah, 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 This is a, yeah, some, some vanity passing here and there. And then you have yourself a solid Nurgle team. I, I mean, it's already solid, but you could make it better. That's always the premise that we're looking for, isn't it? Um, and that was the last team of 4B. Uh, as I said before, I'm not going to go into predicting um, that you guys can do on your own. I'm <laughs> sucking ass at predicting. And we are hoping for all um, all types of good games with a lot of success and death, I guess. Yep. Yep. And I will... See you guys around. I'm going to see if there are any people alive that I want to actually raid. No. Is there? No. There isn't anybody playing Blood Bowl right now. Is there? You're welcome for the recap, JJ Cash. It was fun. I will upload um. this to... The tubes, the YouTubes, uh, very fast. Chapsu and Ice and Mike just started, so if you want to throw it to one of them. Nah, I'm fine. Right. I will throw it to a buddy of mine. I'm going to throw you over to Mr. J. I'm going to be there for the evening. Uh, and then I will see you guys around. Have a good week, and good luck to everybody. You too. And then it loads 7, 8, 6, because I haven't still learned the damn system. So, see you guys around. Bye-bye.